everybody, I'm Janine Thompson-Brown, and this is my final lecture for Dr. Obrey's class. Uh, what I'm going to be talking to you about today is values, and my demographic is middle school, um, seventh grade to be specific. So, my rationale behind teaching values to middle schools is really pretty straightforward. Values are very important to me. And I'm going to be telling you why I think it's critical to help middle schoolers establish values early on. So children grow up in families and in schools and the experiences that they have in schools um, help shape the adults they will become and the world that they will live in. Um, so the problem I see is that our schools traditionally have a very laissez-faire attitude toward teaching values. So morals, beliefs, and traditions happen at home. Papers, pronouns, and test after test after test happen in schools. What I love about the text that I used for this class, um, and it was, a, uh, it was an elective text, um, and it was called uh, What Every Middle School, School Teacher Should Know. And it stressed early on that lack of values among middle schoolers is a huge problem. Some teachers seem to believe that it's possible to teach students without imparting values. In fact, um, the text is pretty emphatic in its statement that middle schoolers are searching for their identities more uh, at the middle school level than at any other time in their school years. So this places a, what I see as a pretty big burden on middle school teachers. And skipping or overlooking values um, is not always the fault of the teacher. Many teachers, including myself, love to nurture a student's emerging values, mm -hmm. yet our education system typically discourages this type of lesson. And instead, the system opts to develop a student's intellect while pushing, of course, for the best test scores possible. Um, to their credit, many schools are trying to teach values, but it really comes off as a lesson in good behavior rather than values. And I am advocating for a new way, a way in which we deliberate about how middle schoolers develop value-based identities uh, in the same way that we are rigorous about meeting academic standards. So just consider for a moment what happens if we don't teach values at some point in school. Schools stay hands off, they narrow what they teach, the focus is always on the test, and students are rarely asked to engage in their communities or connect learning to their identities. So by purposely not teaching values, schools send a clear message to students, and that is value your own success, value your own achievements, earn great grades, do not take responsibility for improving our world. And that, in my opinion, is not good. So, certainly there are school exceptions, and there are wonderful educators in our school systems who are taking the time to get to know their students and to help them to cultivate values. So the text I mentioned earlier devotes full chapters to understanding middle school students and helping them, in turn, to understand what they stand for in our ever-changing world. But the authors do indicate that this is not the norm, and that educators who want to truly know their students beyond their test scores will have to take risks and be courageous. So this is why I'm starting my seventh grade class with such a comprehensive lesson about their own lives. By having statements from them about how, what, why, etc., cetera, um, those questions in their lives, I can better equip my students to start to understand their own place in the world and to become young advocates of change, which I will detail more as we get into this lecture. So the bottom line is when we understand each other, our adults and teens alike, we are better equipped to work together and do superior things in a classroom. Um, superior things that are not driven by things like class scores and uh, test scores. And that is why I am so determined um, to help middle schoolers find their identity and find their voices. Uh, the previous unit I presented, which was called My Life, gives students an opportunity to inventory their own lives and identify meaningful values. Um, and this could be as simple as 
a love of skiing, a connection with nature, affinity to media, music, movies, or a special relationship with a grandparent. So in that lesson, we delved a little deeper to understand how individual values shape our lives and how they can come out from these experiences that we have. Uh, in this unit, students will work in small groups, they will write essays, we will use technology, and we will glean more insights about values. Each student will have to give a speech at the end of uh, this lesson, um, and we'll develop empathy by having classmates talk to other classmates about their values. This is such an important lesson to me that I would like to invite parents to attend verbal presentations. So with my demographic, 7th uh, grade, middle school, um, hopefully Folsom, that's a cat going behind me, pardon me, 7th um, grade, middle school, uh, I believe this could be a powerful way to connect students to each other, to me, and to their families. So we're going to go into something a little more specific here, and I will tell you as I pull this up that um, I had the experience of teaching middle school last week. Um, I taught 17, 7th and 8th graders uh, in a Montessori classroom, and we did an hour and 15 minutes of uh, yoga philosophy, yoga practice, uh, yoga music, um, and it was delightful. It was very, it was very um, poignant and uh, and and. The, the kids were great, so I'm very much looking forward to delving a little further into this. So, um, my draft for this is basically a lesson plan, and uh, we did the My Life assignment in the first week of class, and from that, we extrapolated ideas, events, people, and interests that have shaped my students' lives thus far. And then we're going the step further to get into the values. Um, so as we study values, I want students to consider how they can be themselves. Um, I will give a brief lecture on why it is important for students to act on their own behalf despite what others are doing. So we will discuss knowing your values and staying true to them, making your own choices and not going with the crowd, respecting yourself, and putting forth thought about yourself, your goals, and then acting accordingly. Um, for the Values Lesson Unit, we will take a week and a half, and it will be scheduled directly after the My Life Unit occurs. And as I had explained in my last writing unit, it's so important for us as teachers to really get into their 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 heads as middle schoolers and extrapolate this information about what's going on perhaps even in their personal lives um, which you know things events can often hold them back from from giving their full potential so the plan um, that I have uh, is to introduce one value initially and uh, we'll use kindness as an example so on day one, as I lecture about values, I will use um, the age-old uh, random acts of kindness as an example, and I will engage the students on being kind without having expectations. So I have four YouTube clips to show. Uh, the first is a, is a video towards teachers, and it might be a little controversial. Uh, it's with Rita Pearson talking about kindness, and it's directed towards teachers. Um, this one is it's filled with great information. Uh, it might just be a edgy for 7th graders, so uh, I would definitely run this past my teacher friends before I showed it to them. Uh, the second one is solid. It's, uh, it's a video showing people in a ball pit in New York City, and they're questioning and answering several live questions. It's called Take a Seat, Make a Friend. Uh, the third video illustrates the aspect of paying it forward in kindness, connection, and empathy. And it's a music video. And what seventh grader can't relate to a music video? So it just says, shows one act of kindness building on the other and the other and the other. And all these connections are formed. And you just get this really sense of well-being after you watch this. That the world really is connected somewhere in kindness. Um, and the fourth video is actually one that Dr. Overy steered me toward, and it's called Ben's Bells. And um, 
I love this because um, Ben is, I, I have a son named Ben. Um, sadly, in this video, um, this mother of her Ben, um, she lost him at age three. And after he passed away, she created this giant campaign based out of uh, Arizona. And um, to remember him and to, to, to keep the kindness flowing and to pay it forward. And so uh, these, these groups of people come together and you can purchase these kits online and you make these bells and then you hang them all over your city. And when you find one, you take it home and you hang it up. And if you have a Ben's bell and you have a reminder of kindness. So what, in, what, what better way could we impart um, a, a value like kindness than to have something tangible um, such as Ben's bells? So at the end of day one, I will ask students to perform a random act of kindness. And uh, they can do anything, but uh, they, have to, they have to perform something. And additionally, I will announce that their final project must be completed by day eight of the project calendar. And they will not be given any time in the classroom to work on the project. They'll have to learn to utilize technology on their own. In my demographic, it's safe to say that households have at least one internet-enabled computer, if not two or three or four, plus a tablet and a notebook. Um, lots of technology in my area. So we will um, we'll have that to, to, to dive into. So the project will be a five-minute oral presentation on values. Um, and I will provide a specific list of topics that they may use. Uh, they'll have to use Prezi.com. That's P-R-E-Z-I.com. So it's the next wave of PowerPoint, and that gets us all on the same page with consistency and learning on the same platform. Uh, day two, uh, the class splits into pairs of two. Each student will share their act of kindness essay with their respective partner. They'll interview each other and write a short essay about their partner concentrating on the positive values and experiences. Uh, day three, um, we're gonna introduce each student's assigned partners. So if I'm paired with uh, Beth, um, I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna talk about Beth's life and her values, and then Beth is gonna stand up and talk about my life and my values. So we're definitely getting into speaking and listening exercises there. Uh, day four, uh, a, le a worksheet on how to know your values. Kind of a lengthy worksheet, um, but it definitely delves into uh, what students believe in and what they, what they want to advocate for. So they'll be, given, um, they'll be given some class time that day. And additionally, they will be asked to bring at least two magazines from home for the next day. So on the next day, which is day five, if you're staying with me here, um, day five, they will hunt through magazines for advertisements that are marketed toward teenagers. And I'll give them a set of questions about, you know, what, what is this lesson saying in terms of values? Uh, this is this ad to cause you to question your values. Is this ad influencing your values? So they'll work on that day five. Day six, uh, easels around with the images, the ads, and we'll have a group discussion about each. And um, then I have some hypothetical questions to throw them. Like if you got a copy of a test beforehand, would you look at it? Why, why not? Um, so those types of questions, we'll discuss those. Uh, day seven, uh, the students must be ready to present a five minute oral presentation using Prezi. Again, that's prezi.com. Um, and I will ensure that all the technology details are taken care of so that all a student would have to do is come up and log in. Um, that pretty much concludes most of my lesson plan with the exception of the values um, mini lecture, but uh, that is included in my unit plan. And I think that starting off seventh graders, especially from what I saw last week when I was in the seventh grade classroom, 
getting them going on narrative writing and in the practice of kindness, showing kindness, receiving kindness, being empathetic sets us up for a classroom that we can we can structure then the test scores, the common core, the no child left behind. Um, so thanks for listening and uh, you can read more about my lesson plan in um, the final lesson plan unit. So thanks again.